When it comes to putting a paediatric cannula in, choosing a good location to put the cannula in is going to help ensure your best chance of success because what you want is to be able to get the cannula in first time, but you also want to choose a location that optimizes the chances that the cannula is going to be able to stay in for as long as you need it and that it's not going to cause any complications like extravasation. Your first choice of location should be in the arm and really you want it to be away from a joint because when it's in a joint, it's annoying to the child because every time they bend it, they'll feel the cannula, but also it's more likely to get obstructed or get knocked. So try and pick a location that's away from a joint. In a younger child, often you're gonna be trying for the back of the hand as the next choice. If you can see, see the veins on the back of the hand in a younger child, that's a good option because in chubby toddlers, often their arms or antecubital fossas are going to be really chubby and difficult to see any veins whereas in the back of the hand you can either see it or you know exactly where it's going to be and you're going to be much more likely to get a successful outcome. If you have good ultrasound skills then you could try and look for an antecubital fossa in a chubby toddler but more likely in these younger children you're going to be looking at the back of the hand. The antecubital fossa can be an option in the older child or the young adult but it should really be a last resort because it's really annoying for them it restricts their movement and they fail more frequently here. Feet are an option, but they're mainly for children who aren't mobilizing. They are preferred less because they have a higher risk of complication and a higher fail rate. But sometimes it's really our best option, so we go for the feet. It's also going to depend on what the cannula is for, so how long it's going to be in for. If you're just using it for procedural sedation, uh, it's a quick in and out, then using the feet is fine. If it's going to be in for longer periods, so if they're being admitted for antibiotics, then it's going to be a bit more inconvenient, not just because of the higher rate of complication, but also for a child who's walking around, having a cannula in their foot is uh, really disruptive. If you've got a child who's going to be particularly distressed by having a cannula in, so like a child with a sensory processing disorder or or a child with a learning disability. It might be a good option to put the cannula in the foot because it's going to be easier to distract them from it. It's not gonna be as noticeable as having it in their hand or arm. But if they're walking about again, it's gonna be really annoying. So you need to weigh up these options. If you're stuck, you do have other options to look at. And remember, particularly in babies, we've always got the scalp so you can shave a space of their hair so you can get good access to a vein. So there are always other options and I've just outlined the most common ones. Ideally, you want a nice, juicy, bouncy vein that looks straight, that's easy to see, that's in a good location, not near any bends. But life doesn't always work out that way, so we have to choose the best option that we have available, but make sure you have a good look around for all the options so that you're choosing the best one. We've all got a preferred spot, and mine is the basilic vein on the back of the hand in between the fourth and fifth metacarpal. I love this because it's always there and it's juicy and it's lovely. And even in those chubby toddlers we talked about where you can't see it, you know if you go there and you hit that spot, once you're in, you're gonna be able to feed it through really easily. But I'm sure you've got your preferred spot too and that's totally fine. Just remember, uh, there's other options in the hand as well, but also if you're choosing one that looks really spindly, even if you get it in and get that flashback, it can be really tricky to feed it through. If you're going for the forearm and you can't see anything, then using an ultrasound can be really helpful to help you find the vein and get it in first time. On those rare occasions where we're spoiled for choice and you've got like loads of options to choose from, then it can be helpful to choose what's practically best for the child. So uh, ask them which hand they use to write with or color in with and use the other one because freeing up the hand that they use can make a big difference, especially if they've got the cannula in for a long time. If you've got a family who have a child who gets regular cannulas, then ask them because they are going to know, they're gonna have been through it loads of times and they're gonna know where the preferred veins are, where people get the most success and follow their advice. By doing this, not only are you gonna optimize your chance of success, but you're also gonna have the family on board. So it's a win-win. All of this advice is gonna help you choose the best location to optimize your chance of success. And if you like this, you will enjoy our video about how to position your patient well for getting the cannula in, which you can see here.